Hello, and welcome to a very special edition of Elevator Pitch Series for the Radiographer. I am Michael. This time, we go through the pages of history. Sit back and relax while I tell you the story of radiography. As you may already know, it all started on this day in 1895, when German physicist Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen unintentionally discovered X-rays while he was experimenting with cathode ray tubes. Just like the unknown variable, X, in algebra equations, he named this never-seen-before radiation X-rays, a name we still use today. On the 22nd of December in that same year, Röntgen discovered how useful these X-rays would be in medicine when he made a picture of his wife's hand. This image would go down in history as the very first X-ray image, the first of many. When his wife, Anna Bertha Ludwig, saw this image of the bones of her hand, she was amazed and said the famous words, I have seen my death. Many scientists were inspired by the discovery of X-rays. And when there is scientific curiosity, one name is never far away. That's the great Thomas Edison, who by 1896, after testing over 8,000 materials, discovered that calcium tungstate released bright light when exposed to X-rays. This led to the birth of fluoroscopy. However, the illness and eventual death of his assistant, Clarence Daly, caused Edison to rethink his commitment to developing fluoroscopy. He abandoned his work on fluoroscopy in 1903 after realizing the health hazards of repeated exposure to X-rays. I bet he always knew fluoroscopy would be made safer and brought back. Today, it is the equipment of choice in many special radiographic examinations. Now we move to radioactivity. Even though it officially happened in 1898, the discovery of radioactivity actually dates back to the 1st of March, 1896 when French physicist Antoine Henri Becquerel, who had just heard about the discovery of X-rays, sought to find out if the uranium salts he'd been working on would also release X-rays when exposed to sunlight. Even though this experiment failed, he realized that these salts did release their own kind of radiation. And in 1898, Marie Curie and her husband, Pierre, picked up on Becquerel's work by studying the release of these rays from the uranium salts. They named this process radioactivity, and it is the bedrock of nuclear medicine, a branch of medicine in which radioactive substances are used to diagnose and treat diseases. And then, roughly six years after his amazing feat, Röntgen received the first ever Nobel Prize in physics for the discovery of X-rays. At this point in history, radiographs were made on glass photographic plates, similar to the ones used by professional photographers at that time. However, in 1918, towards the end of the First World War, Eastman Kodak Company introduced photographic films. These were a less expensive and higher quality option than the glass plates and were adopted almost immediately. Next up, angiography is the technique of visualizing the lumen of blood vessels. It was developed in 1927 by Portuguese neurologist Agas Monas at the University of Lisbon, where a cerebral angiography examination was carried out. The image above is what angiography looks like today, a great advancement over what it was in 1927. That takes us to literature. If you're watching this, there's a 90% chance you've heard the word Clarks. This is all thanks to Kitty Clark, who in 1939 wrote the very first edition of Clark's Positioning in Radiography, undoubtedly one of the most important textbooks in radiography. Its 13th and latest edition was published in 2015, and it is still as relevant as it has always been. And then there were the 1950s. This was essentially the decade of music legend Elvis Presley. But those weren't the only sound waves in town, because in 1956, English physician Ian Donald introduced ultrasound to healthcare when he used a one-dimensional amplitude mode scanner to measure the parietal diameter of a fetal head. He would go on to develop a portable ultrasound machine for clinical use. That takes us to 1962, when American scientist David Cull introduced a new technology called emission reconstruction tomography. This is basically the backbone of positron emission tomography and single photon emission computed tomography, two nuclear medical imaging techniques that help to provide information on how the body is functioning. And then, in 1971, the first CT scanner is built by English electrical engineer, Godfrey Hounsfield. Unlike the CT scanners of today, the first scanners took as much as five minutes to produce just one slice image. The CT scanner in 1971 was also known as the EMI scanner, named after Electric and Musical Industries, the electronics company that Hounsfield worked for. But here's a fun fact, EMI was not just an electronics company, it was also a record label. And at the time the CT scanner was built, they had the famous rock band, the Beatles, signed to them. 
Six years after computed tomography, the first MRI scanner was completed by Raymond Damadian in 1977. Before this time, magnetic resonance imaging had seen a lot of research, development, and breakthroughs, and in fact, multiple people can be attributed to the development of the technology. Two notable individuals, often referred to as the fathers of MRI, are Damadian himself and Paul Lauterberg, who produced the first image using magnetic resonance in 1973. That takes us to the 90s, when Ronald Nutt and David Townsend combined two sets of technology to present the world's first PET plus CT scanner. A CT scanner allows you to appreciate the structure or anatomy of a patient, while a PET scanner allows you to observe how metabolism and other functions are going on within the patient's body. By combining these two, you are able to appreciate both structure and function. This technology was so well accepted that by 2006, production of PET-only scanners was generally discontinued. That takes us to exactly eight years ago, when this day is officially adopted as the International Day of Radiology, when not just radiographers, but radiologists, and everyone else connected to the profession of medical imaging, celebrates and promotes the role that medical imaging is playing in healthcare. Since then, the profession has not stopped growing. Conference after conference. Exhibit after exhibit, invention after invention. The story of development in radiography continued. And we're still not done. On the field, in the classroom and in everything else that we are doing, we are writing our own chapter in the story of radiography. No role is too small. Just keep doing what you're doing, and keep doing it well. From my colleagues and I in Nigeria, to you, wherever you are in the world, happy World Radiography Day. This is the story of radiography. If you loved this video and would want more content, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Until next time, do take care.